Hello, my name is Carson Stewart, and this presentation will focus on max phase based ceramics, specifically dealing with titanium aluminum carbide and titanium silicon carbide and its fabrication method. The title of this research paper I'll be referencing is called Fabrication of Max Phase Base Ceramics by 3D Printing. This journal can be found in the Journal of Ceramic Science and Technology, Volume 6, page 87 through 94. The specific scope for this study was to focus on the progress that is being made in the fabrication of max phase based ceramics with combined processes of 3D printing and reactive metal infiltration, or RMI. Key questions addressed were, how does structural design of porous preform affect the RMI process? And two, what is the relationship between the mechanical properties and phase content of the final part? This slide shows some insight on the combination of 3D printing processes and RMI process. There were two 3D printing methods that were discussed in this paper. For the first method, porous carbonaceous preforms composed of glassy carbon powder were produced by a 3D printer. The printer that was used was a binder jetting printer. The second 3D method printing method involved the printing of a mixture of silicon carbide and starch cellulose powder. Pyrolysis was used to degrade the starch cellulose to perform to form the preform. After the preform was produced, before RMI process could take place, the preforms were infiltrated by liquid silicone at 1450 degrees Celsius in a nitrogen atmosphere. The final result was a porous composite with a coarse silicon carbide grain structure. RMI then took place with the newly formed preform. Molten metal penetrates the porous preform and reacts with the materials to form a bulk compound known as max phase based ceramic. The materials used, as discussed before, for the preform were carbon powder, silicon carbide, and a starch cellulose. The graphic on the right shows a typical microstructure for preform made of these strip materials. For the RMI process, molten aluminum and molten silicon were used to make the two different compounds. Key results. It was found that the characteristics of the porous preform do have an effect on the RMI process. An equation was developed, shown to the right, that relates pore volume fraction, pore radius, and wetting angles to the infiltration depth of the molten metal being used for the RMI process. As you can tell, pore radius and wetting angles have a direct effect on the infiltration depth of the molten metal as shown in the table to the right. For the mechanical properties, it was found that the phase composition of the max phase ceramics fabricated by RMI means included intermediate products like TIAL3 or TISI2, ceramic particles like AL203 or SI C and some unreacted TIC and residual melts. Since the mechanical properties of these different components vary significantly, the effect of phase distribution on the mechanical properties of as synthesized ceramic parts is significant. The table below shows the different intermediate products that can be pre present in the two different parts and their related mechanical properties. In conclusion, RMI is a pressure-free process which reduces shape deformation and maintains a high level of part resolution. This makes RMI a promising method for the near net shape manufacturing of max phase reinforced composites. Also, during the fabrication process, both raw material and pore distribution of the preform should be pre-designed to facilitate the infiltration of metal melt in order to better control deformation as well as the phase distribution of the final material. Overall, I found this article to be very thorough, especially with its description of the combined processes used to create max phase based ceramics. I also found it unique to know that there is a movement towards combining 3D printing processes with other manufacturing methods to perfect the fabrication of complex parts.